I wasn't threatening anyone. I was really upset by what you and your friends did. I said I would forgive everything if you paid for a meal, so just leave your wallet and go. I realized later that your apology was fake. Both Olivia and Scott had that mocking look on their faces. They planned this from the start. We just sighed as we watched them rant. Just leave your wallet and go. You know what will happen if you talk, they said. Scott is higher up than Larry at work. I just smiled at their words. If they were going to be like that, I wasn't going to hold back. Are you sure about this? You'll regret it, I warned them. They thought I was joking and just laughed it off, saying they didn't care. I put my wallet on the table, and they thanked me mockingly, saying they'd give it to Larry later as a treat. Larry was furious, but I calmed him down, and we left, ignoring them. Soon after, we took action and made sure they would regret their actions. I'm Laura. I live a peaceful life with my husband Larry and our son Frank. Larry and I met in college and started talking more when we worked on group projects together. We shared hobbies and began dating soon after. We got married five years after graduating. A few years later, we had our son. Larry works in IT sales and is well-respected at his company. Though he had a tough start, he admires his father, who managed a company. Larry wanted to follow in his footsteps in sales. I still get tough feedback, but I want to be like my dad. When Frank was born, my in-laws really helped us out. My mother-in-law went to cooking school and now works as a hostess at a famous restaurant. Her husband works with her, handling the business side. Their advice is always to do your best in whatever you're doing at that moment. I've always liked to design. While working in administration, I used to draw for fun. This hobby became useful as I started taking freelance web design jobs. The projects got bigger over time. Then, today, Larry came to me with an idea. Hey Laura, our company needs a designer. Want to try it? I really like your designs. It'll be busy, but I'll help you. What do you think? Your designs have a special warmth, he said. At first, I was unsure, but my father-in-law, who was visiting, agreed with Larry. With their encouragement, I decided to work on a design. Once I started, I was determined to do well. Larry and I worked together to come up with the best design. It took some time, but I finally made a design I was proud of. To my joy, they chose my design, and it sold really well. Larry and I were thrilled when we heard the news. We thanked my in-laws for their support, and they were as happy as if they had succeeded themselves. It's all thanks to your design, Laura, they said. It's really nothing. Having this experience means a lot. Thank you, I replied. This whole experience was a big moment for me. I started spending more time on web design, which was just a side job at first. Eventually, I made as much money from designing as I did from my day job. So I quit my administrative job and now work as a freelancer. Thanks to Larry's company, I also get to design whenever they launch a new product. Our son Frank, who is now in middle school, has grown into a smart and kind boy. He loves playing soccer for his school club. Life is good, but there's one thing that bothers me. It's about Olivia, whose son Kevin is in the same soccer club as Frank. Frank and Kevin are great friends and they even ended up in the same class this year and often spend weekends together. Frank talks about Kevin a lot. Kevin came over to our house once, and he was very polite. I was happy Frank had such a good friend. However, Olivia can be a bit too much sometimes. I first met her during the school's open house. It was obvious right away that she was Kevin's mom. Kevin, you are definitely Mama's pride and joy, she said. Mom, stop. It's embarrassing, Kevin replied. After the class, during the break, Olivia loudly exclaimed, making Kevin embarrassed. I thought she seemed like a loving mom, but that wasn't quite true. Really, Kevin is by far the best. The others just seem to be playing around during their presentation, she said loudly. The room went quiet. Kevin looked annoyed and said, Didn't I tell you to stop? Everyone took their presentation seriously. I couldn't help but wonder if her comment was really appropriate. Soon after, the parents had to leave for another meeting and started to leave the classroom. 
Frank, you did well in your presentation. You have club activities today, right? I said. Yeah, Frank replied. Do your best. I'm going to make your favorite hamburger steak for dinner. Really? Awesome, Frank said happily before leaving the classroom. Frank talked to me, and the other kids told him he was lucky to be getting hamburger steak for dinner. I felt relieved seeing Frank handle the situation smoothly. At the parent-teacher meeting, we could sit anywhere. Un- So I chose a corner seat. That's when Olivia approached and started talking to me. Aren't you Frank's mother? she asked. Suddenly, I was surprised by her directness, but she sat down next to me anyway. I wanted to meet you. I'm Olivia, she said. I felt a bit trapped, but listened to her. I wondered how she knew I was Frank's mother since we hadn't met before. Seeing my confusion, she explained, You were talking about dinner with Frank earlier, right? That's how I knew. And calling hamburger steak a treat seems so laid back. I was taken aback by her comment about our dinner choice, especially since we just met. Frank loves hamburger steak, and I don't think it's your place to comment, I replied. She seemed displeased with my response. Well, that's true. My husband works at a major company, so he doesn't quite get the ordinary tastes, she said. When she asked where my husband worked, I didn't engage further and just brushed her off. Fortunately, the meeting started, and we settled down. After the meeting, she asked if I wanted to grab some coffee. I tried to decline a few times, but she insisted, saying, Come on, it's just some mom friends bonding. Besides, Kevin and Frank are good friends. I felt I had little choice and agreed. We exchanged contact information and went for coffee. During coffee, she talked a lot about her wealthy life and her husband. Since then, she invited me for coffee several times a month. Although our kids got along, I wasn't too happy about it, but went along. One time, when I declined, she hinted, You know, my husband knows a lot of people, even Frank's club coach. It felt like a subtle threat, so I maintained a reluctant friendship with Olivia. What shocked me further was finding out that Olivia's husband worked at the same company as Larry. I nearly spit out my drink in surprise when I found out Olivia's husband worked at the same major company as Larry. She had mentioned it was a major company, but never specified which one. I hadn't thought it would be Larry's company. I learned this when Olivia came to pick up Kevin from our house today. Kevin had been over to play, and I had planned to just meet Olivia at the door, but she came inside since the kids were still there. Isn't your husband working for XAZ Corporation, Laura? She asked. I nearly choked on my tea at her question. Seeing my shocked face, Olivia seemed pleased, and I had a bad feeling about where this was headed. Why? I asked. Because I saw a business card in your room with your husband's name on it and recognized the company name, she explained. Hold on, are you saying you just went into our room? I asked, shocked. No, I didn't mean to. I was just looking for the bathroom and happened to open the wrong door, she replied. I was relieved my sons weren't around to hear this. I had given Olivia directions to the restroom, so I truly thought she was lying. But I had only told her verbally, so I couldn't really push back too hard. Indeed, in Larry's room, he has business cards for work. I designed the business cards for Larry's company, so there are several different types, and he had some displayed under a desk protector. She must have seen those. Stunned and at a loss for words, Olivia approached and said, I really don't like you too. Her previously friendly demeanor had vanished, and her eyes were now sharp and piercing as she glared at me. Do you enjoy taking work away from other people's husbands? she accused. Excuse me? I replied, not understanding her implications. She threw out one last barb. Well, whatever. Just remember, I'm going to make sure you regret this. I was speechless and later recounted everything to Larry. So Scott's wife is Laura's friend, he said, surprised. It seems so. It must be a coincidence. But she seemed to have some sort of grudge against us, I said. Who's this Scott guy? I wondered aloud. Larry took a deep breath and started explaining. 
I don't think it's right to talk about such things. But Scott works in the planning department. He's very assertive, Larry explained. The product planning department creates products and works with the sales team to make money. Scott is a key figure in planning and is known for strongly believing in meritocracy, meaning a lot depends on whether he is interested in something or not. Working with him can be great or terrible. People say, I still don't understand why Olivia dislikes us so much, I said. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I don't really know Scott well, I replied. Sorry for dragging you into this mess. It's okay, but what about Frank and Kevin? It's not good for the kids to be close if their parents are at odds, I said. Yeah, I'll try to find out more, I promised. A few days later, Olivia called me. I felt anxious, but answered. She sounded much more apologetic than before. I'm so sorry about the other day. I was just stressed about my husband's work not going well, she explained. Well, I listened because she sounded sincere. She apologized and suggested that since our husbands work together, we should try to get along. How about we all go out for dinner, she proposed. Considering her past behavior, I was hesitant, but thought of our children's friendship and decided to give her the benefit of the doubt. That's fine, thank you. I'll arrange the place and let you know the details later, she said, pleased, as she ended the call. The day came and we went to the restaurant Olivia had chosen, known for its seafood. However, Olivia and her husband were nowhere to be seen. I tried calling her. When I mentioned my name to the receptionist, the staff member looked concerned. I was shocked when the receptionist told us, I'm sorry, but the reservation is only for three people. What? Larry and I were confused. What was going on? I asked the staff member to wait and immediately called Olivia. Hello, Olivia. The restaurant just told me the reservation is for three people, I said. She laughed and told us to wait a moment. Soon, Olivia and a man walked in. Larry recognized him. Scott, good to see you, he said. That's when I realized the man was Scott. Olivia and Scott were smiling broadly, which gave me a bad feeling. I'm sorry, I made a mistake with the reservation, Olivia said casually, which annoyed me. Then she said something even more shocking. Well, mistakes happen, but let's not waste the food, right? What are you getting at? I asked. Look, Larry, I'm soon going to be the head of the planning department. You're doing well in sales, but you're still a newbie. If you don't want things to go sour, you might want to listen to what I have to say, Scott said. Are you threatening us? I asked. It's not a threat, Olivia interjected. Laura, you and Larry have hurt me deeply. I'm offering you a way to make amends. Just leave your wallet and go. I realized then that the apology was indeed a lie. This was their intention from the start. We saw it as we watched them argue. Look, just leave your wallet and get out. By the way, you do know what will happen if you tell anyone about this, right? Scott's higher up than Larry, after all, Olivia said. At that, I couldn't help but smile. If they're playing it that way, there's no need to hold back anymore. All right, but are you guys sure about this? You're going to regret it, I said. They might have thought I was bluffing because the three burst into laughter. Like we care, they said. I took out my wallet and placed it on the table. Seeing that, the three sneered at me. We'll give Larry his wallet back later. Thanks for the treat then, Olivia said. Larry looked furious and clenched his fists, but I calmed him down and we left the room, ignoring the three. We quickly took action. They were the ones who were going to regret this. Yeah, can't let people who pull stunts like this go unpunished, I thought. Later, a call came in on my phone. Recognizing the number, I answered with a smile. Ah, Laura, looks like we're almost done here, I said. I handed the phone to Larry. After a quick talk, he hung up. Well, shall we go? Seems like things have heated up, Larry said, looking very upset. We went back to the restaurant Olivia had chosen. Once there, we asked a waiter to call the owner. Soon after, the landlady, who was also Larry's mom, hurried out. Thank you for your help. I'm sorry for the trouble, I said. 
It's fine. People like them need to be taught a lesson, she replied, looking as angry as Larry had been earlier. We were led to a room. As we opened the door slightly, a tense atmosphere was evident. Inside were Olivia, Scott, and some senior officials from Larry's company, including his father-in-law. Why had it come to this? The restaurant Olivia chose happened to be run by Larry's mom. We realized it as soon as Olivia told us to meet there. It was a coincidence, but since we were going there anyway, Larry decided to call his mom. It was revealed that Olivia had only booked for three. We knew she hadn't made a reservation for four, but played along anyway. Once we understood Olivia's intentions, we immediately reported it to Larry's mom. Being straightforward people, both Larry's mom and Larry reported it to his dad, which led to the current situation. Scott, what's going on here? A man asked. Scott, well, um... Scott was flustered, understandably so. That man was Mr. Bryan from the planning department's top management. Next to him was someone from the sales department's upper echelon. I think my father-in-law might have called them over. He was the former CEO, so it's understandable how he'd react if he found out his family was being treated this way, especially in his wife's restaurant by employees from his time in charge. Actually, my father-in-law used to be the CEO of the company where Larry works. He's now retired and not involved in its management, but he was highly respected during his tenure. Even now, he's still in touch with company folks. After hearing the story from my mother-in-law, he immediately reached out to the company to explain the situation. When the CEO hears that one of his employees is trying to exploit another employee by using their position, he's going to take action. The three, who didn't know this, were surprised by the sudden appearance of the company executives at the restaurant. They seemed unable to grasp the situation. Larry said he wanted me to accept this invitation, because my husband often works with Larry even now. I was shocked by the clear lies coming out of their mouths. They showed no regret, and I wondered if they didn't realize that such obvious lies would eventually be exposed. Just then, to interrupt Scott, Larry entered the room. To the surprise of Olivia and Scott, Larry politely said, Excuse me. Scott glared at Larry as soon as he saw him. We understood the situation completely, but for Olivia and Scott, it must have been confusing. Before Scott could respond, my father-in-law spoke up. I'm the former CEO, Andrew. I'm retired now and have handed over the company to Mr. Bryan here, he explained. By the way, Larry is my son, but he didn't get his job at the company through any connections of mine. In fact, I wasn't involved in his hiring at all, and I should mention that this restaurant is run by my wife. Hearing my father-in-law's explanation, Olivia and Scott seemed to finally understand the situation, and their faces turned white instantly. Olivia let out a sigh, almost without words, and Scott was shaking uncontrollably. Olivia, looking incredulous, seemed more flustered than I'd ever seen her. "'Let's cut the small talk and discuss the matter at hand,' said my father-in-law." The discussion, or rather, the one-sided questioning they faced, started in a tense atmosphere, and Olivia and Scott struggled to speak. Olivia's issues with me apparently related to some design work at the company. It turned out that Olivia had also been considered for the same project initially. When the project was discussed at the company, my design was chosen. After searching among friends and family for talented designers, this choice boosted Larry's reputation. Moreover, despite being relatively new, Larry had developed his own sales techniques, earning trust from his juniors and contributing to the company's performance. It frustrated me that he was taking credit for achievements that he accomplished with the help of his wife's talents. I truly believe Larry has been working hard, but didn't you feel the same when you got advice from him? This left Scott speechless, and a senior planning department executive made a sharp comment that added to his silence. Scott felt overlooked because whenever the sales department finished their tasks, they would give detailed advice to the planning team. This bothered Scott, making him feel like his products were overshadowed by Larry's. As Larry's answers continued to receive praise, Scott became resentful and often complained to Olivia. One day, Olivia overheard me talking about my work with some other moms. I love designing and often draw illustrations for school events like PTA meetings. 
Some of the moms knew I worked freelance, so when Olivia learned that I was the designer chosen for the company project, she started picking on me. Hearing this, we were speechless. We were honestly shocked that they would concoct such a scheme out of jealousy. Moreover, we learned another disturbing fact. I'm really disappointed in you. Please wait. I'm truly sorry about this, Scott pleaded. But Mr. Bryan coldly responded, I've heard from one of our planning department guys, I hope it's not true, but there's a significant amount of money being spent on planning. Is it really all going towards actual products? At this, Scott froze, and Olivia turned pale. It turned out Scott had been embezzling funds under the guise of planning expenses. This revelation took even us by surprise. It seemed Olivia was also involved in the scheme. How did you get caught? You said it would be a secret. Olivia asked. I don't know, Scott responded, frustrated by Olivia's question. His expression was that of someone who had inadvertently admitted to embezzlement, but it was too late. Mr. Bryan sighed and bowed his head to my father-in-law. I'm really sorry. I never expected something like this to happen in the company that Mr. Andrew trusted me to run. It's my fault for not supervising better. No, it's not your fault, Mr. Bryan, or the fault of the senior sales and marketing staff, someone said. It's this couple who only know how to play dirty tricks. You both are going to pay for this. Hold on, she's the one to blame, one accused. Excuse me, weren't you the one who said we could embezzle money? The other retorted. Hey, we had a store, keep it down, someone intervened. Shut up, if you hadn't interfered, if you had how dare you act all high and mighty when you're the one at fault? Well, if the husband is like this, so is the wife, someone said. In the end, Mr. Bryan had the arguing couple handed over to the police. It was only right since they had embezzled money. It caused quite a scene and was a hassle for the store, but Larry's mom handled it gracefully, and the situation was quickly controlled. Larry told me that Scott got fired from the company and was sued for damages. They were very strict with him, probably because it involved the company's products. Kevin stayed with Olivia's parents for a while after the incident. Olivia's parents came over to apologize. From what I heard, the couple is now living quietly, maybe as a way to make up for what they did. Seeing how sincere Olivia's parents seemed, I couldn't help but wonder how their daughter and son-in-law ended up this way. I was worried about Kevin. But the company made sure the incident stayed quiet, so thankfully no rumors spread at school, and Kevin was fine. It's unfortunate what happened to him. I talked to Frank the other day, and Kevin seems to be doing well at school. He's a good kid, and everyone trusts him. Rather than being sad about his parents, he seems more upset with them. That's good to hear. I haven't seen Olivia and Scott since that incident. Kevin, however, still hangs out with Frank and even comes over to our place from time to time. Watching the three of them play so happily, I hope they never end up like their parents. By a stroke of luck, we were safe this time. But I truly believe that our daily actions attract the people and opportunities in our lives. I want to cherish my relationships with others more than ever.